In the previous four videos, we learned how different types of light sources can be used in RenderWorks to create bespoke lighting scenarios. Those light sources are what we call direct lights. They cast a light and thereby create a shadow. A more subtle but no less very important type of light is indirect light. But what is indirect light? Here we have a scene with just one light source, some directional light set to fall into our scene at an angle and casting its light onto the floor by the window. However, the left part of the scene is completely dark and we cannot see what's there. That's because we have no indirect light calculated for this scene. Let's see what happens if we add an HDRI background. I'm just going to add HDRI white because it is neutral and without any colour bias. It is often used just to add some environmental light to render scenes. You can see the situation improving slightly and we can now recognise the outline of objects on the left side of our scene. But there is also some undesirable graininess present now. Plus, notice the render time of just over a minute. So, how does this come about? Well, let's examine the custom RenderWorks settings. You can see that I've already set environmental lighting to very high. The environmental lighting setting is only observed, however, if indirect lighting is not present. So, how do we turn on indirect light? Go to View and then set indirect lighting options. As you can see, indirect lighting is currently set to none. Since we have an interior scene and we want the light to scatter and bounce off a maximum of surfaces for an even lighting effect, we will set the bounces to 8. Immediately, the situation improves. The graininess has disappeared and notice how render times have improved dramatically. We've come from 1 minute 2 seconds to just 21 seconds. So, whilst our HDRI white background has improved our lighting, it doesn't really add any interest to the world outside of the window. To improve this, let's add an HDRI panorama. I'm going for a peaceful rural scene. So, that's turned the white emptiness into something more usable, but it also has an immediate effect on the lighting in our scene. Well, fortunately, RenderWorks allows you to have the best of both worlds. In the Set Indirect Lighting dialog, you can override the effect of the current background by choosing a custom background just for your lighting. Now we have lit the scene with HDRI white while still seeing the panoramic image as a backdrop outside the window. Now, if you're still not satisfied with the overall indirect light intensity, you have ways of changing that too. Let's edit the HDRI white resource. Like with most settings in RenderWorks, you can go over 100% with brightness value. Let's change it to 200% and see what it looks like. By the way, a good indicator for the right brightness is the light cast onto the ceiling right near the window. If this becomes blown out, you've probably set the HDRI brightness too high. This looks about right though. So, what will happen if we change brightness and, in this case, also saturation of our backdrop panoramic image? Well, let's see. I'm setting this to 200% brightness and 800% saturation. OK, we're not noticing any change at all. So, these settings don't apply to the image itself, but to the light it emits. The ability to emit light is what makes HDRI, or High Dynamic Range, images a source for environmental light. So let's try this for our environmental light source. Since HDRI white is neutral, we'll replace it with HDRI morning, which has a blue-purple colour. Immediately, the effect is visible. Now, let's edit it and change its saturation to 500%. Now the effect of the intensified saturation comes into play as the hue of the environmental light has changed to a deep blue-purple. There's one more tweak RenderWorks provides in the Set Lighting dialog, that is Ambient Info. Turning it on will revert the scene to OpenGL for a more immediate response. As you drag the slider to the right, you can see its approximate effect by way of a live OpenGL preview. Ambient Info will just brighten up your scene by applying some ambient light to all objects in a scene equally. This is extremely useful in situations where you have interior scenes with small or no openings to allow HDRI environmental light through. Let's just revisit the Lighting Options dialog. As you can see, there is one more setting here, which is Ambient Occlusion. As a rule of thumb, you should never use Ambient Info without Ambient Occlusion. 
See what happens if I turn it off. The relationship between adjacent surfaces is lost or is a lot less pronounced. Both ambient info and ambient occlusion are artificial, non-physical light effects which add no extra time to our rendering but will improve dark scenes dramatically. One last word of warning, don't overdo ambient occlusion and try out settings several times before your final presentation rendering. That's all for now. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.